Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimbal the Limp, and I'm back with a little more. I want, I'm, I'm gonna push this again. Agar Sanguinarius. Agar, Agar. Ah, I know I'm gonna mess that up. Anyway, we're back into the game. I know a lot of you guys have been thrilled to see this back on the table, just like me. I was excited for it, so I'm glad a lot of you are happy with it. Uh, feel free to keep putting your comments down below and I will update as I can. Now, in the previous video, we had finished off with getting the Normans, which why in the hell did I not get? <laughs> That's why the letter was in. God, I was so stupid over that. <laughs> anyway, we got our Normans and our, um, oh shit, now I forgot the other guys. Uh, not Argentinians, uh, Armenians. Onto the board, they conducted a few attacks, did pretty well. They got a couple of stuns, nothing going on over here, but uh, a couple of guys stunned and hopefully can finish them off later. So now we're going to side B, so they get to go, but they're getting a full turn. Remember, we got our sequence of play right here, and the way the game started was in phase three, so with movement for the side coming on the board, so they didn't get to do any offensive shooting. Now, the uh, the Turks, they actually do get to do some offensive shooting. Just flat off the bat, they get to take some shots. But they've only got a couple archers. they got one here, and they got one here. And they, like I said, they've got a few javelin guys. But I kind of want to hold on to their javelins for a little bit longer. I might throw one with this guy just because, well, he's on the roof. He's not going to be able to see much. He could see down there. Maybe, yeah, we'd let him throw there. Maybe over to there, but those guys have armor, so it'd be harder to get them. You know, might let him throw there because he's not going to be probably around too much longer. A lot of guys are running into his building, but the others, I kind of want to hold on to their javelins for now just in case. So we'll take some shots with the archers for sure. We got one here and we got one up here. And I went ahead and turned everyone back the correct direction. We'll use our beads and turn in the uh, the counters just to remember on who's done what at this point. Now, there's not going to be as much offense coming from these guys because remember, they've got to hold the buildings. Their goal is just to hold out. They lose points if they back out of these buildings. They've got to have at least a couple of guys in there trying to, to hold them off. That's why this side does have an advantage in that they can initially swarm trying to take over these buildings. But like I said, their initial strength is going to turn into a later weakness because they're going to have to leave guys behind as they're pushing along. We'll see how it plays out for them. All right, let's start with our archer here. He's looking down. And who does he want to take a shot at? Let's see. I think I'll give him the shot if he wants to shoot at this guy because I think that would give a terrain bonus. Let's see. Yeah, that would be a light cover type for the well. And they're both up against the building, so he could effectively like lean over the edge and, and shoot down on him if he wanted to. I'm trying to kind of do it thematically. Yes, the, it, there's the line of sight thing. So like these guys here would be out of his line of sight because of the way the building, the shadow of the building. But this one, this one, these guys, he's shooting across cover. I think they would still be open though, but they have armor. So yeah, we're gonna give him the shot here. Let him take a shot right down on him. That's his better bet. There's no armor and he's not in cover. So nothing to worry about there. So firepower of six and he's using a composite bow at point blank range. So definitely no modifier to worry about. Let's look, not a mounted target. So it's again going to be on this middle one and none over here, no cover, because otherwise he'd be rolling on one of these, depending on what cover they're in. So let's roll and see what he's going to get. We'll mark him with a B just so I remember he has offensively shot. All right, big boy, what you got? Oh! That could be dead. That could be dead. One is bad. <laughs> One is very bad. C, character killed. Oh, no. What a shot. Oh, he put it right through his dome. <sighs> He's done. Silent but deadly. Okay. Well, you have uh, 
redeemed. That's the word I was looking for. You have redeemed yourself by killing this guy from right across the building. He, man, just must have put it right through the uh, the eye socket of the helmet or something, taking him right out. All right, damn, what a shot. All right, so he is over here. He can't fire at these guys because they're in cover. Let's see. He could fire there. Or he could fire down over here. I think we'll have him continue to fire here at him because this guy swarmed in. So they stunned one of their guys, so he's gonna try to take him out in payback, plus he's weaker defense. So fire at him. Definitely again, point blank range, no cover, so it should still be the same chart that we're looking at on what he's going to be rolling on. All right, so let's roll for him. All right, no more ones. <laughs> Give me a 10. Dead, dead, dead. Two. That's probably dead. Yep. Boom. Another C. Oh, God, that's horrible. Those archers are starting to, to make up their stuff. All right, let me grab their counters to their other ones so I keep them together. Let's see. Where's this guy? All right, he's dead. And let's see, that's light infantry RAL. Is he over here? Yep. That's his wounded counter. We'll go ahead and set these guys out of the way so I don't have to worry about their counters. We already know they're dead. Damn. The archers are starting out sick, man. Just taking people out. Okay, so I think that's all the offensive shooting unless we want to give this guy a javelin. Do we want to give him the javelin? Let's look. All right, javelin, foot javelin, range one to five. Offense only. So the only time he could throw it is now. He can't do it defensively. If he throws this way, one, two, three, four, five, just, just in range to do that with no penalty. And the guy's not in cover. Yeah, we're going to give it to him because they're doing pretty well. All right, so we're going to mark him with that, signify the fact that he is throwing his javelin. So he can't do that again. Maybe I'll it under him or something so we remember okay not good not good oh what am i doing i'm completely missing the fact that they have to do this i was sitting there thinking all right i'm doing something wrong i'm doing something wrong i'm doing something wrong uh they've got to check for the target hex we'll let the two guys stay dead since uh, i'm like i said you're going to make errors when you play these games there's, there's just no way around it and i don't mean this game specifically i mean any game and the way I do it since I play most of the stuff solitaire is if I make small little goofs like this, I tend to make them in both directions. Just let it fly rather than going back and trying to retcon everything. And it uh, sticks in your mind too, because losing two guys is a good way to remember. Make sure you're hitting the target X. Because I was like, no, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. All right, so definitely got to get this modifier in here. And let me just check, just make sure. No, nope. throwing javelin, javelin at one to five, just in five. And he is coming in from behind. So we're going to roll to see if he hits his target hex. Damn, can't believe I goofed that. Oh, what a big goof. It's all right though. Learning game and my mistakes mean you guys won't make these in your own home game. All right, six means it drops one back to the right, right there, just the wrong spot. Oh, okay, so it's a miss. We don't even have to worry about rolling on it. All right, well, cool, cool. I'm good with that. Now, this wouldn't have mattered. He was shooting at point blank range. He wouldn't have had to do it. And this one, one, two, three. I can't remember how many it is for archers. I think it's... It's two or four hexes for archers. I'll have to look that up just to make sure. But well, within short range, you don't have to check to see if it misses. This javelin definitely did have to check though. So uh, actually, I don't think these would have changed. Everything happened the way that it's supposed to. The dice gods prevail as usual. All right, now at this point in the game, this is where you're going to announce any charges that you have going on, but obviously, they have no cavalry just yet. Theirs are still 
right there. They're not coming in until the uh, beginning of turn five, I believe it is. So we do have a little bit of time. Now it's just their movement phase and their combat and cleanup. And that's what I was thinking. It's like, okay, do I adopt defensive postures? Do I adopt offensive postures? Like, which is the best way to go with this? And I don't think it's a good idea to clean these buildings out. I could be wrong, but by staying in the building, staying in doorways, it makes it to where they have to come to me. I keep a terrain advantage, uh, can shoot down on them, throw javelins, you know, whatever the case may be, but, and also funnel them in. So if like someone comes in through here, they can only fight one at a time or, you know, things of that nature, instead of trying to put them out here where they're gonna get swarmed and taken down. So I think that's the better bet. Now I was trying to decide, should we move this guy forward and fight on the stairs? See if stairs give him any benefit. Stairway, no, that's negative terrain advantage too. So he would actually be at a disadvantage. Okay, so his best bet is actually to stay here. Because as people come up, they have to fight on the stairs and that gives them a negative while he's in a neutral, which means that's a column shift in his favor. So him staying there is good. This guy's got movement points, but he's the archer. He's definitely going to want to stay there and shoot while he can because he's a sniper. Sir, so, and he could do defensive fire as they come up top there. Same thing over here, because I was thinking about moving these guys down, but now that I know the stairs are negative terrain, there's no reason to move them down. Because if I move him down, I'm just putting him at a disadvantage. Okay. Should I move him or do an attack? Well, I could attack with him one-on-one -on -one towards the peasant, but... I think attacking across the windowsill would confer him the bonus. So he would actually be at worse odds to do that. Maybe move into this doorway. Yeah, we move him over here into this doorway. They're going to have to kill the stun guy, but people can jump in through the windows too. So these guys would just jump in and get him from his six. He really has no good option. He's probably going to die. <laughs> so maybe his best bet is to attack just to see if he can cause some damage. Yeah, checked it again. When combat's through a doorway or a window like this, the defender is always considered to be at favorable terrain which means with him being a neutral terrain that he's in, he would get a negative column shift. And a negative column shift at his defense is going to be, ooh, a very, very bad table for him. It might be his best bet though, just to take a chance to see if he can cause some damage. There's no reason to go after the armored guy because that's equal and puts him at a severe disadvantage. He'd be rolling way bad. Ooh, he's, he's really got no good options. He's probably dead. <laughs> yeah, he's he's probably dead. I might just take the chance with him that he might be able to push him back and just see. I mean, the dice gods have been favoring him this round. And otherwise, it just behooves them to hang back because this, they're attacking through the doorway, gives them advantage. This, they're attacking on stairs, gives them the advantage. This, he can attack him coming up there. Maybe moving this guy down so he can attack and try to force them back around. Maybe get some one-on-ones. That's his best bet. Because this guy's doorway, doorway, stairs, roofs. No reason to move anyone else. We're just going to move this one. Yep. Having to think it through, guys. Having to think it through. So we're going to move him. He's going down. So he's going one, two, three. And now he is underneath it. So let's put this underneath him just so I remember. He is inside the building now. That way he can attack this one here. And it's six on three. And that's that's the best that he's going to get. Favorable terrain. Oh, wait, no, the door's there. 
So that's three, four, five. All right, so he has to go there to attack him. But if he moves down to there, wait, no, he can't because that's an infiltration. Yep, that is an infiltration. He's going to have to attack through here onto him. Yep. All right, so he's going to attack here. That's the only attack that I can get going because all these guys are piled up in here around the stun guy. They'll be able to finish him off relatively easily. And the rest of these guys are in good positions. Yeah. And this one, like I said, there's, there's really, there's no good choice for him. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the attack on the peasant and hope the dice gods go in his favor. Because otherwise, if he backs off, they can come in through the window after him. If he tries to attack, he's got bad odds, but it's the best chance that he has because he's going to get swarmed. Once they kill this stun guy, they're going to come in. So at least this way he's going down swinging, which I think is a very Turk thing to do. So yeah, we're going to give him that. All right. Uh, the only two attacks that we're going to have, the rest of these guys are going to wait for uh, the bad guys to come up the stairs after him. So we'll do this attack here. Uh, six attack on three, difference of three, which is going to put us right here on zero to four. I don't think there's any other modifiers that are going to affect that. They're both in neutral terrain. All right, here we go. What's he going to get? Four. Four is actually pretty good. Four is C. C is all defenders retreat one hex. Where can he retreat? He's kind of pinned in. I think if he can't retreat, he gets wounded. We'll back him up here against the corner so he's plastered up against the wall. All right. Now, see, the thing is, this guy could advance after combat, but there's really no reason for him to advance after combat. Because if he moves forward, he's just getting himself pinned in. At least this way, they only have to come at him in one direction. So I think that's his, his best bet there. So we'll go with it. All right, one more combat to worry about. One that's probably not going to go too well. He's going to attack through the window, try to spear this peasant. Seven on his defense of three, which is a difference of four, but negative combat shift because he's attacking through the window. And that's going to put him zero to four. He's going to be at negative five, negative one. Oh, that's so bad. So bad. He can, let's see, at best he can stun him if he rolls a one. Otherwise, he gets a retreat. Well, at least he can force him back a little bit. Hopefully, he gets a stun. So, let's see what he's going to get. Come on. Swing hard, big boy. Six, which I think is going to be nothing. No. Six is one attacker wounded. That is so bad for him. Oh, so bad. Let me grab his guy. All right. So, he his attack just did not go well. But, I don't know. But... I'm giving him, like, a chance. It's, like, the, the best chance he has. He's surrounded. It doesn't matter if he retreats, if he attacks. I mean, there's really no good option. And if I'm going to go down regardless, I'm going to go down swinging. So, at least he did go down swinging. Unfortunately, his stats are reduced now. So, he's going to be even easier to take out on the following turn. And his only buddy is stunned. Oh, that is so bad for him. All right. I think that is it for the attacks that we're going to have because I didn't move anyone else into range. Yeah, so that's that's it. But these guys do come back from stun. So after you finish your round, anyone that was stunned in the previous turn does get to flick back over. So this guy's coming back up and this guy's coming back up. So that's going to help them out a little bit. Got to try to finish off those stun characters quicker, but it's going to be hard in these buildings when you're kind of pinned in, right? Because these guys are here to help, but they can't kind of mass fire them. They can't get multiple swings going on because only a couple of guys can get on top of them. So these buildings are going to favor the defensive character or player 
a little bit more, especially since the attackers are going to have to funnel. If the attackers take damage, it's going to be a little bit of an issue switching them out for fresh attackers. But the defenders do suffer from the fact that they're pinned in and they can get surrounded and picked off. So it can go in either direction. It just depends if the defender's smart about it. Unfortunately for them, the defender is also me, and I'm not that smart, so <laughs> it's probably going to play badly for him. All right, but we will pick up with turn two. Let's find it on my die here. Where is it? I'll have to find it later because it's a... Oh, here it is. Turn two, it's going to go back to player side A, and they are going to get to do a little bit more because they could do some cavalry charges, but again, there's really not much the cavalry can do unless they want oh and one thing i meant to move this guy up the napata dude i want to move him up i'll have to do that on the next round tuck him behind a building here see if he can throw his molotov catch these guys while they're grouped up so have to remember that one but the cavalry can't do much and i don't want to pull them out here where they can be shot by the archers so they're kind of hanging until these are cleared out and then they can race forward and get ready to intercept the enemy cavalry when they come on the board. I don't know. This one, the building ones, if the cavalry just don't seem to be as useful. When you're doing an open field battle, the cavalry is it. They can just run roughshod over the infantry if they want to, especially if they're getting the charging bonus. You see some real big differences between the attack numbers and the defensive numbers when they, uh, they get that charge bonus going on. All right, but you guys stay tuned. Let's see how this plays out. The defenders are holding out pretty decent. They got a couple of kills. They, uh, they're they holding their ground, so it might be a little bit harder for the attackers than we were originally thinking for them to take these buildings. All right, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one.